How's it going, my peeps? It is now time for the post WrestleMania Raw results slash highlights and review video. I'll go over the results, some of the highlights, in my opinion, and give you guys my thoughts, my review on the show. So, it kicks off with the video package uh, that they showed before the Triple H and Daniel Bryan match last night, except they ended with a couple pictures of Daniel Bryan's championship celebration last night at Mania. And then. Uh, right when Rock kicks off and we're in the arena, you see all the all the crowd is chanting yes, yes, yes already as the show just started. And Justin Roberts announces uh, or introduces the new, and right when he says new, the crowd knows it's going to be Daniel Bryan coming out. So they start cheering. And then Daniel Bryan's music hits. He comes out to a big pop. And he's got both championships, of course. And once he's in the ring, the crowd is just cheering Daniel Bryan, and they keep cheering that for, for a long time. Uh, so Daniel Bryan tells them, you guys never get tired, do you? And then they chant, no, no, no. Bryan then says that, you know, when, since he's holding two championships now, it's harder to do the yes thing. And... Uh, the crowd is chanting, Danny Bryan goes over how, you know, he went against the authority and won the championship at WrestleMania, and the crowd tells Danny Bryan, you de or, they or chant actually, you deserve it, and Danny Bryan tells them, you guys deserve it. So then at that point, Triple H interrupts, he's all mad, he comes down the ring with Stephanie McMahon, but he just gets on the apron and tells Danny Bryan that he's not going to get in the ring uh, because of what he'd do to Daniel Bryan. So then Daniel Bryan tells Triple H, oh, you, did you just say you're not going to come in inside the ring? So he grabs the championships and then goes right in front of Triple H while Triple H is on the apron and starts posing with them and holding him, holding them up, chanting yes right in front of Triple H's face. Triple H tells Daniel Bryan that, you know, his championship reign won't even last through tonight because tonight it is going to be Daniel Bryan defending the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Triple H. So Triple H versus Bryan. And then Triple H leaves. After that, backstage you get Triple H and Stephanie McMahon talking and Batista comes up to them. And he's mad about what happened last night. He says it wouldn't have happened if Triple H wouldn't have lost. And then Triple H says, I wasn't the one tapping last night. And then Randy comes in. He's also mad. And he wants a rematch for the championship because he was the champion. And he's entitled to a rematch. And he wants that rematch tonight. Triple H then tells Randy that you know he can get his rematch at another time. But tonight, you know, it's his time. He's going to get a championship match with Daniel Bryan. And then Stephanie actually announces that tonight, Batista and Randy are going to be in tag team action against the Usos for the tag team championships. When I heard that, I was excited. I, you know, I'm all for like an evolution reunion or, you know, Batista and Randy uh, as tag team champions. I don't know. For some reason, I like the idea of that because uh, I think it would lead to maybe Triple H, Batista and Randy versus The Shield. I know I've said that numerous times now in numerous videos, but <laughs> I really want to see that match. But anyways, uh, Batista and Randy uh, say that they don't want the tag team titles. Uh, they want the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And if they wanted the tag team titles, they could just take them. And, you know, Stephanie and Triple H calm Batista and Randy down or just uh, try get them on the same page. Triple H tells them that, you know, history has shown that when the three of us are on the same page, we're unstoppable. So that ends that segment. And after that, the White family make their entrance for a six-man tag team match against John Cena, Sheamus, and Big E. And they ended up having a great six-man tag team match. You know, the, the, the crowd was really loud during the matchup, too. They were really pro Wyatt family, cheering every member of the Wyatt. Whenever Bray Wyatt would get cheered, uh, I mean, get tagged in, they would cheer really loud as well. Uh, they would boo John Cena, they would boo Sheamus, they would boo Big E, but I'd say Big E got the, l the least amount of boos out of, you know, Cena, Sheamus, and Big E. And uh, they, were, they were chanting a lot of different things. They were chanting, Cena sucks. They were also chanting, John Cena sucks. To the, the way they were chanting it was the way John Cena's theme music goes. And at some point in the match, actually, there was a slight, you know, let's go Cena chance, but it was really outdone by the Cena sucks chance. And, uh, you know, in the end, the White family ended up winning the match and they won the match clean. They just, just beat up, you know, the other team. You had in the end, Bray Wyatt and Biggie were the two legal men. And Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt was doing the crab walk. And when he was doing that, the crowd was uh, chanting, Bray is going to kill you. Just like there used to be chants for 
Uh, Taz is going to kill you. Samoa Joe's going to kill you. Uh, but, you know, since this is Bray Wyatt and he does his sister Abigail and he kisses them before that, uh, next time there's a chance Bray is going to kiss you because, you know, he will kiss you before he hits sister Abigail. But anyways, so before Bray kisses Big E and hits sister Abigail, uh, John Cena tries to interfere, Eric Rowan just hits him with a big shoulder tackle, and Luke Harper hits a suicide dive on Sheamus on the outside, and then Bray Wyatt hits Sister Abigail, gets a three count, and the Wyatt family win the match, and the crowd cheers. After that, it was Fandango, or actually before that, they showed a video uh, promoting Slam City, and then after the Slam City video, it was Fandango and Summer Rae versus Santino and Emma. And the crowd was doing the uh, fandangoing uh, while Fandango was making his entrance. Anyways, short match. And in the end, Emma wins for her team by making some rate tap out to the Emma Lock. And then after the match, uh, Santino and Emma awkwardly hug, or uh, Santino awkwardly hugs Emma. And then afterwards, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar came down to the ring to talk about Brock breaking the streak. And... You know, it was a long promo, but to sum it up, it was an incredible promo where Paul Heyman just put over Brock, you know, really uh, just showing the importance of what Brock did and that Brock is the one and that, you know, there's legends, there's superstars, but there's only one, you know, Brock Lesnar and he's in a league of his own. And that in the beginning, he also said, you know, uh, I hate to say I told you so, but we told you so. And he says, the guy has a t-shirt that says, you know, eat, sleep, conquer the streak. But yeah, it was seriously an incredible promo uh, of Paul Heyman just really putting over Brock and going over how impressive uh, that accomplishment is. And he also went over all the other accomplishments that Brock has. And he says that all the other superstars are wannabes. And, you know, some of them came up to him saying that, you know, I could have been the one to break the streak. And, but then he goes over how, you know, Randy couldn't beat the streak. Shawn Michaels couldn't break the streak. Triple H couldn't break the streak. But yeah, to sum it up, awesome promo. Following that was the Tag Team Championship match, Batista and Randy versus the Usos. And uh, this match didn't last long at all because it ended in a double count out because Batista and Randy just destroyed the Usos uh, pretty much from the get-go. The Usos got a little bit of offense in the beginning. But afterwards, on the outside, Randy Orton hit the DDT uh, from the barricade onto the floor. And Batista, he, uh, Batista bombed the other Uso onto the steel steps. So they just destroyed the Uso. And when Batista was setting up for the Batista bomb uh, on the steel steps, he said something along the lines like, This is how much we, we care about the tag team titles and afterwards, he Batista bombed uh, the Uso, and then him and Randy go inside the ring and raise their hands as if they won the match. After that, Rob Van Dam made his return in the match against Damon Sandow. Rob Van Dam pulled off his signature moves during the match, the rolling, uh, rolling thunder, and he also hit the uh, the light drop from the apron onto Damon Sandow, who he put on the barricade, and he put him on the barricade like right next to John Cena's dad. And then he went on the apron, hit the spinning leg drop. And then after that, it was the Rolling Thunder inside the ring. Followed that up with the 5-star Frog Splash for the victory. And then Rey Mysterio made his entrance. And he was facing off against a returning, or at least returning to in-ring action, Bad News Barrett. Bad News Barrett got a big pop when his music hit. And uh, it was a nice little match. In the end, Rey Mysterio hits the 619. By the way, the crowd was booing Rey Mysterio, kind of like the Rumble. And after Ray hits the 619, he climbs up the top turnbuckle, you know, to go for the splash. But Wade Barrett gets up, and I think he hit a big boot on Ray Mysterio, and then he followed that up with the bull hammer while Ray Mysterio was like hanging from the top turnbuckle. He then covers Ray and wins the match. Oh yeah, and by the way, how could I forget? In the beginning of the match, he grabbed the microphone and he says, you know, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. And at that point, I was thinking maybe he just fooled the fans, and he, he was going to say he wasn't going to compete, but before he could say anything else, Ray Mysterio started punching him, and then the crowd started booing Ray. But, uh, yeah, after that match, it was time for Alexander Rusev's debut. They show, like, a video package of Rusev before he debuts, and then once they come back from commercial, Lana gets introduced, and Lana introduces Alexander Rusev, and then it's Rusev versus Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder got, like, a couple punches in, maybe a kick, and then after that, it was just 
total domination. Rusev just destroyed Zack Ryder. He hit his uh, fallaway slam into a Samoan drop, which I really like. And then after he hit like some sort of weird side slam move, and then he followed that up with the camel clutch. He calls it something else, but I forgot what he called it. But yeah, as Zack Ryder taps out, and that's it. Rusev wins in like three minutes. So after the Rusev match, it was time for the Ultimate Warrior to make his raw appearance. So his music hits, comes out, and then you see the commentators talking, and then when you, they go back to Warrior, now he's got his uh, jacket on, and the, the Ultimate Warrior jacket, and he's shaking the ropes. And then he starts talking a bit, but then he stops, and he tells the cameraman to hold the microphone, and then he pulls out a mask. He pulls out an Ultimate Warrior mask, puts it on, and then basically cuts an Ultimate Warrior promo. He tells the fans that they are the legend makers, they made the Ultimate Warrior a legend, and they can make any of the other superstars legends, and that the ultimate, the spirit of the Ultimate Warrior will live forever. And that was pretty much it for the promo to sum it up, and then after that, AJ comes out with Tamina to brag about her championship victory last night, and uh, she says she's the best diva in the world, and that she is the diva's division. And when she said she was the best diva in the world, <laughs> the crowd chanted CM Punk. Anyway, she gets interrupted by Page Music, which gets a big pop. Uh, at the beginning, when Page Music hits, uh, for some reason I thought it was going to be Karma. But anyways, it was Page, and she, like I said, she gets a big pop from the crowd. And she tells AJ she's here to congratulate her. AJ says, you know, she doesn't need her congratulations and to run off, go back to NXT. And uh, at some point, AJ just gets annoyed and tells Paige that, you know, since you're here, how about I beat you? And Paige tells her she's not ready, but AJ slaps Paige. And then she also says that she's going to put her championship on the line for a WrestleMania, uh, post-WrestleMania treat. And then the match begins... Right, like right away, AJ locks on the Black Widow, but then after a couple seconds, Paige counters it into the Page turn, I think is her finisher's called. But it looked really like unimpactful, like not a strong move. Um, so she reverses it into that, and then she covers AJ, gets the win, gets a huge pop from the crowd for the victory. So AJ, I mean, Paige is the new Divas champion. Afterwards, we get Hogan presenting the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Trophy to the winner, Cesaro. And before he does so, Hogan goes over how his favorite WrestleMania moment last night was when Cesaro lifted up the Big Show and, you know, threw him over the top rope. He introduces Cesaro. Cesaro comes out actually with Zeb Coulter. And before he can say anything, Zeb Coulter grabs the microphone from him and tells him, you know, he'll take care of this. He's got a few things to say. And at some point he says, you know, Cesaro is a Zeb Coulter guy. And that's when Cesaro interrupts him, grabs the microphone and says, sorry, but, you know, I'm not a Zeb Coulter guy. I'm not that guy. I'm a Paul Heyman guy. And then Paul Heyman comes out. And Paul Heyman calls Cesaro the King of Swing. And then the crowd starts chanting King of Swing. And he also calls Zeb Coulter a grandpa. And at some point, Paul Heyman decides to go to the announcer's table to let them talk about Cesaro or something like that. So he gets out of the ring, goes to talk to the announcers. And then from behind, Swagger takes down Cesaro, takes him out of the ring with a clothesline. And then he grabs the trophy and freaking throws it onto the mat, which breaks the trophy or separates Andre from the ring part of the trophy. And then he grabs the rest of the trophy and throws it out of the ring. It all breaks. Cesaro sees that, gets pissed. He gets back in the ring. He attacks Swagger, clotheslines him out of the ring. They then go to commercial. Once they come back from commercial, it's now a match. Swagger versus Cesaro. And on the outside, you see Paul Heyman holding the rest of the trophy. Uh, the Andre... The giant part of the trophy is still intact, kind of, because one of the foot, uh, the one of the foots is like taken off, but uh, you know the rest is fine. So he's holding that, and uh, towards the end of the match, Swagger, I mean uh, Cesaro, starts hitting a bunch of uppercuts. The Irish whips Swagger into one corner, runs towards him while he's still in the corner, and hits an uppercut. Irish whips Swagger to the other corner, and then runs towards him. Another uppercut, does it again, again, like four or five times. And then Swagger gets it, has enough, and just he gets out of the ring, and he gets himself counted out, just leaves along with Zeb. And then that's it. Paul Heyman gets back in the ring, 
and he celebrates with Cesaro and shakes his hand. And then backstage, we see Stephanie with Kane and the Shields, and she's telling them that tonight, Triple H, you know, to, to ensure that tonight, Triple H becomes the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and the Shields and Kane argue, the Shields uh, tell Kane, hey, where are your buddies, you know, the New Age Outlaws, and Dean Ambrose uh, says, you know, we're probably not going to see them again as long as we're here. And then Kane gets mad, and in the process, he spills the beans and says that a couple weeks back on SmackDown, when him and the New Age Outlaws took out the shield, that Triple H told him to do it. And then Stephanie McMahon stops Kane, uh, you know, from talking, and she tells everybody that, you know, what Triple H wants something, he gets it, and she asks them, asks them if, you know, she's made herself clear. And they both say, both the shield and Kane, uh, that, yeah, she's made herself clear. So then after that, it was time for the main event, Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Daniel Bryan comes out first, and then, instead of Triple H coming out, you get Batista and Randy coming out. They get inside the ring, they attack Daniel Bryan, and then Randy hits an RKO on Bryan, Batista hits a Batista bomb on Bryan, and then, that's when Kane's music hits. He also comes out, and... When he comes out, the commentators are like, oh, finally, you know, some order around here, you know, but come on, everybody knows Kane is coming out to also chokeslam Daniel Bryan. So yeah, he gets in the ring, chokeslams Daniel Bryan, and that's when Triple H music hits. Triple H comes out, and he gets in the ring, and then he tells the referee to ring the bell, so the Stephanie, the referee, that doesn't really want to ring the bell, you know, telling Daniel Bryan, or telling Triple H, you know, Daniel Bryan's in no shape to compete, uh, because of all the attacks, but Triple H tells him you like your job, you want to keep your job, so ring the bell. So eventually the referee rings the bell, and then Triple H mocks Daniel Bryan's yes chance. But before he can do anything to Daniel Bryan, the Shield's music hits to a big pop from the crowd, and then the Shield came out with the same you know face masks that they had last night at WrestleMania, and then they get to the ring, and they stand right in front of the ring on the opposite side of where Batista, Kane, and Randy are standing. So then Batista, Randy, and Kane all get on the apron, and the Shield also get on the apron, and Triple H is in the ring telling them, don't do this right now, you know, uh, we're not about to have this, we're not about to do this. And despite that, the Shield gets in the ring, and Batista, Kane, and Randy get in the ring, and Triple H is still trying to have them not fight, and he's talking to Kane, Randy, and Batista, and then he turns around, bam, spear from Roman Reigns, and then Kane, Batista, Randy, The Shield, they all fight, The Shields, both Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins take out Batista and Randy to the outside, and then they both hit suicide dives on them, while Roman Reigns in the ring was about to get chokeslammed by Kane, but he overpowers Kane, grabs Kane's arm off of him, and then he hits a Superman punch on Kane, and then Kane rolls out of the ring, and then there's only Triple H in the ring, The Shield, and Daniel Bryan, who's slowly getting up. Now, Triple H is surrounded by The Shield. He looks at them, he gets up, and then he turns around, and out of nowhere, Daniel Bryan hits the running knee on Triple H. And then Triple H rolls out the ring. Or actually, no, uh, Batista and Randy pull Triple H out of the ring. And that's pretty much it. Afterwards, Daniel Bryan celebrates on the top turn buckle while the Shields, you know, fist bump uh, right next to Bryan. And the Shield, or Evolution, and Kane look on from the ramp. And that was it for the show. Pretty cool ending. And uh, it's what I wanted to see, too. If you guys check out my Raw preview, I was talking about how I could see, and I was hoping that the Shields would back up Daniel Bryan, and that we would get, you know, Evolution versus the Shields, and we kind of got that tonight. Now, it wasn't a match, but we got the Shield backing up Daniel Bryan against Evolution and Kane. And now I'm wondering, are we going to see the Shield versus Kane and Batista and Randy first, or is it going to be right away the Shield versus Evolution? But anyways, man, tonight's show was a great show, just like WrestleMania last night. Uh, the post WrestleMania Raw was awesome. A lot of highlights. I mean, we got a new Divas champion out of nowhere. Uh, I don't think a lot of people expected Paige to debut tonight. Also, the crowd was great the entire night. The crowd was like one of the highlights of the show. 
Uh, the six-man tag team match in the beginning, the Wyatt Family versus John Cena, Sheamus, and Big E. That was a great six-man tag team match with the Wyatts getting a clean victory. And Cesaro becoming a Paul Heyman guy, I'd have to say that was really unexpected. Because I was thinking Cesaro was now, you know, face... But now he's associated with Paul Heyman, but he's still like a face. I, I don't know what's going on with Cesaro. Is he going to remain a face while being a Paul Heyman guy? Or is he going to uh, be a heel? I'm not sure, but I'm interested in seeing what happens. Also, the promo by Paul Heyman. That was an amazing promo. One of the best promos I've seen in a long time. Also, with the ending there on Raw... Now there's a possibility, there's a very, very strong possibility that we are going to see The Shield versus Evolution in the match. And also, in other good news, Daniel Bryan is still the champion. He didn't get stripped of the championship. Nobody cashed in. Triple H didn't beat him for the championship tonight. He is still the champion. So happy about that. Just a great show overall tonight. So for that, I'm going to give Raw a 9.5 on 10. Pretty much the same score I gave uh, for WrestleMania 30. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, as always, you can click that like button down below. And also, I'll be posting up the WWE 2K14 roulette this week, the newest episode. So stay tuned for that. And with that said, I'm like, guys. Uh, see ya.